If you are a WordPress developer or site builder, this video is interesting for you. In this video, I'm going to explain you what the Drupal CMS is and how it might be a good solution and a good fit for you as a WordPress developer. As much as I like WordPress uh, and I sometimes I used it in the past, I'm not sure about the latest developments. Um, but personally, I'm more um, a Drupal developer, uh, working since many years with Drupal. And I don't know if you saw the news uh, on 15th January 2025, Drupal launched its a new product called Drupal CMS. The name is maybe a little bit misleading because you could think, well, well Drupal was always Drupal CMS, but actually... And now uh, the Drupal community separates the Drupal core, which is the foundation, the framework, basically, and then the Drupal CMS, which is more or less Drupal core plus, I don't know, 20-something modules you typically anyway in in install. But it's kind of prepackaged, and so you don't have to basically be a Drupal expert to set up a... Drupal site and get up and running very quickly. And in this video, I'm going to show you what Drupal CMS is, not in very depth, but maybe also what you are looking for as a WordPress developer uh, and uh, yeah, find some similarities and maybe that you can also see the potential uh, where Drupal CMS um, is strong in it and also how you can switch over if you are interested to try it out. And if you look at Reddit, there is actually, um, yeah, interesting discussions going on. For example, in the WordPress community, Drupal CMS 1.0, a serious alternative for WordPress. I would say, yes, it's a serious alternative, but I will point out the points uh, later in this video. But also I see in the Drupal uh, subreddit that m lots of people coming in to, for example, here is somebody uh, 25 years in WordPress experience now trying out Drupal. So there is a lot of discussion going on and it seems that some people from the WordPress community are trying out Drupal and floating into the Drupal community. And we highly welcome you and we also encourage, encourage you to try it out because I think there is really something in it, especially now with the new Drupal CMS launched. So how can you install it? So let's go to the drupal.org website. Then you go to Drupal CMS. And then you go to the documentation. And then you see here installed Drupal CMS. And then you want to install it using DDEF. So DDEF is a local development environment. I won't go into details right now. You can find the docs as well. So what you then want to do is you want to follow these steps. So you download the zip and then you want to install, um, you want to do the Drupal launcher. And actually I already did that. So I downloaded the zip, I launched it. This will then boot up my local environment, the Docker containers. Um, so you see a, a DB is needed, a web server is needed, so then it started. And then the site will boot up and then it will look like this. So this is the new Drupal CMS installer. And the power of Drupal CMS is it comes with pre-configured types. So think type of a uh, content type. So in WordPress, you have the post type, the page type, but then also with advanced custom fields who can create structured content. In Drupal, we know structured contents since, I don't know, over a decade or since Drupal 5, basically with CCK or even before there were, were tools to do that. But since Drupal 7, it's in core. So you have fieldable content types, content structure as part of the core. So now I want to, for example, install a simple block, but I can also say I want an event directory or news or person profiles, but let's just, just start with a block. So I will then start the installer. And this will take uh, a couple of seconds. So as I said, uh, the advanced custom fields, and I don't want to go deeper in the deep bakel with advanced secure fields in the WordPress um, community. But aside of that, the structure content within Drupal is really one of the powerful features. So you not only get 
uh, fieldable content types, but you actually get a lot of different fields. So there is a field obviously for text, for numbers, for VCV content, but also for references to other content types, but also for media elements, for remote elements like um, ISBN uh, numbers for books, for example, geolocation field, etc., etc. And I quickly demo that. Uh, so you can go, once it's installed, you can go to structure, content types. So I create, by the way, the blog post, um, because I was installing it before, is now uh, coming up here. But now I simply create a new content type. Let's call it book. I have a couple of settings here. Then save and manage fields. So now I'm able to create fields. So these are the different field types that comes with Drupal CMS out of the box. Obviously, you can install additional modules and um, yeah, basically extend the different fields. Uh, now, just let's uh, create a field. We could call it book cover, for example. Continue, hit save. Uh, I have to select an image, uh, the, the, the media type. So I want images here. That's nice. Let's also, just for um, the purpose of demo, the book title, hit save. And now I have two fields. I can extend that the way I want. Now I create content. So I want to create a new book. Now I have the title, book one. I have the book cover. Can select that. And then I can hit save. And voila, here is my structure content. So you already try to see, or I try to explain the potential, how that's going on. So this is just the tipping point of what's possible with Drupal. Very, very powerful stuff in terms of content management, structure content, content management. Super powerful because it's part of core. It's part of a modern PHP infrastructure. So Drupal runs on Symfony components. So you have dependency injections. You have modern uh, uh, software development concepts. You have a modern architecture. Before Drupal 8, and this was already, you know, I don't know, almost a decade ago, Drupal 7 was also kind of old school PHP, not spaghetti code, but you know, it was not professionally proper MVC framework. As for me, WordPress still feels like this spaghetti code, everything is global, but Drupal did a big step uh, years back to actually modernize the framework on top of modern components, PHP standard components. Everything is um, available through Composer, so you can include community provider, provide a Composer um, plugins from the Drupal ecosystem, from the broader PHP ecosystem, but also from your own uh, Composer-based uh, based architecture. So this very much feels like enterprise um, software development from a CMS, uh, from an architectural point uh, of view, but on the other side also ease of use because you have a UI to configure everything. And now with the Drupal CMS, it really enters in this segment of site builders. So if you are as I said before, if you are a WordPress builder, maybe not, you know, coding a lot, maybe adapting themes and stuff and, you know, make, make the site work how a client wants to, I think Drupal CMS is a very, very valid solution for you. So let's go on. Um, obviously, what I want is I want to install additional functionality. For this, I can go to extend. This is probably something you want to do uh, on your own projects. Now Drupal CMS come with the concept of recipes. So what is a recipe? A recipe is basically a prepackaged um, set of functionality, can include um, content types, uh, it can include additional functionality. And now, for example, I want to install <coughs> a search. So let's do that. And now, uh, if you are coming from the Drupal uh, space, this is this always almost feels like magic. So a lot of stuff is happening in the back. Uh, and now if I go to my site, so I go back to the site, I do have to search here. And now I can search for my book and boom, I have an instant search and it works nicely. So that's super cool. 
recipes are con community contributed and they will also evolve over time. So that's one way to add additional uh, functionality. Now I want to show you how you can install additional modules and you're likely going to install and use a backup module. So you, what you want to do on your site is you want to be able to backup the database and maybe if you did something wrong to restore it. And for that I go to extend, then I browse, browse the modules and now I have access to thousands of modules from the Drupal ecosystem. And now I install backup migrate so this is a module, has lots of installs. Backup and restore your Drupal MySQL database, code and files, migrate aside between environments. So yes, I want that. Backup and migrate supports GZIP, blah, 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 compression, as well as automatic scheduling, scheduled backups. So super powerful backup solution. And now I go back to my front page. And by the way, I always have a go-to, so now I can also search the functionality so that I don't have to go through the admin UI. So I go there, and now I'm able to uh, backup, so I want to do a quick backup. So I don't want to download it, I want to keep it in a private secure folder. And then just backup now, so backup complete. So I go to saved backups, and voila, I tested that before, so that seems to work fine. I can then also, uh, just for the sake of a demo, I just um, add book two or book one changed, save, then I go back to backup migrate, uh, sa saved backup, now it should um, restore the change title, so boom, it's back and if I go to contact it's back again to book one. So installing new modules, super easy. You don't have to use Composer on the command line. Now with Drupal CMS, it's possible through the admin UI, installing new modules, installing new functionality through RCP. Very powerful stuff. So next, what about the front end? Yeah, so I have to admit, Currently, um, Drupal front-end development is still a manual thing. So Drupal is not strong with uh, the selection of thousands and thousands of themes as in WordPress. So basically, uh, we assume that you build your own custom theme. In this video, I won't go into deeper to that, but there is a, a clear path to how you actually create your own theme. Uh, and anyway, in a larger WordPress project, you had to build your own custom uh, front-end theme anyway. So, but Drupal makes a very clear separation between basically content structure, functionality, and then also the theming of it. But there is something cool on the horizon, and it's called the Experience Builder. And for that, I launched this video because this was also published by the founder of the Drupal project. And um, yeah, I know a couple of people working on the experience builder in Drupal, and this is just a demo what's already there. So this is now available. So what you have is really a site builder, an experience builder, similar to what you know from Webflow and other site builders, but within Drupal as a Drupal plugin and as part of the whole Drupal ecosystem. And as you see here, you can you have a, a canvas in the center, and then when you, you can select uh, elements um, similar to the Gutenberg editor, basically, but then you also have on the left side a structured overview of the library, what components are available. You can then drag and drop them. As you see here, you can uh, copy them. Uh, then you can also explore uh, the site structure. And this is not as in the Drup uh, in the WordPress uh, Gutenberg approach, everything stored in one blob, in one body field. This is actually stored in a, 
very intelligent JSON data structure, and it's actually loading the data from the structured content we saw before. I cannot demo that because Experience Builder is not stable at this point, so now it's January 2025, but this will be available later this year, and if you want to try it out, um, it's already available and you can install it. Just look up Experience Builder and Drupal, and then you will see that. One uh, thing I have to mention if we talk about Drupal, and um, this, which is headless. So basically, uh, one of the big trends of modern um, website infrastructures is building headless solutions. And actually, myself and my company, we are building a Drupal-based headless solution. It's basically a SaaS product. It's called NodeHive. I don't want to, want to go deeper into that, and this is certainly not an advertisement, but what I want to say, Drupal is very, very strong in offering a API for headless so, uh, solutions. So if you want to use modern front-end technologies like Next.js, Astro, Svelte, whatever you want to use, uh, Drupal is a perfect candidate because Drupal has this very strong focus on the structured content, as I demoed before. And uh, it offers very solid out-of-the-box APIs, either a JSON API or through GraphQL with additional modules. You can install that. For, uh, the JSON API is offered out-of-the-box with Drupal Core. So this is super powerful. And so, yeah, you have many options uh, to summarize now what I talked about. Install Drupal has never been easier than before. Just go to drupal.org and then you will find doc slash Drupal CMS and then just try it out. Install it locally, play around with building content types, installing recipes, installing additional modules, and you will see you pretty much like it. I'm super curious what you think about. Do you think that Drupal CMS is a potential uh, replacement for WordPress even or an, a good alternative? I'm super curious. I made my choice, so I'm a Drupal guy. I, as much as I like WordPress, I like the proper architecture of how Drupal is built. And also now with this innovation with Drupal CMS, as well as with the experience builder, and as well as with, its, with, with the powerful headless solutions, I think it's a very modern and a very f powerful content management platform for build, not only small sites, but also large scale enterprise use cases. See you in the next one.